Hello, I'm David Hardesty. In this lecture, we embark on a study of state income taxation of electronic commerce with an overview of multi-state income taxation. The objectives of this lecture are to to review the basics of multi-state income taxation. This overview of multi-state tax includes an introduction to the manner in which states tax individuals and an introduction to the manner in which states tax corporations The lecture will include a brief comparison of the two methods of taxation and will include a brief discussion of the special problems faced in electronic commerce. Let's start with multi-state income taxation of individuals. In general, most states tax 100% of the income earned by their residents. That is, an individual resident of a state is taxable on 100% of worldwide income earned. For example, assume Webco is an online company with income attributable to operations in five different states. Also, assume that Webco is a sole proprietorship and that its owner resides in state A. In general, all of the income from Webco will be reported as taxable in the state A individual tax return of its owner. In addition, where income is earned in multiple states, states in which an individual is not resident tax the individual on income earned or sourced in those states. For example, in the case of Webco, one or more of the other five states may tax the income earned in those states. The income taxed in those states is a combination of income allocated to those states and income apportioned to those states. See the text at 15.04 for a discussion of the allocation and apportionment of income we will be going into allocation and apportionment in depth in a later lecture. Our focus will be on apportionment of web-based income. To prevent the same income from being taxed in more than one state for individuals but not corporations, States use a system of credits. In most, but not all, cases, a resident state will give its resident individuals credit against state income tax for the tax paid in other states. In other cases, a state will give non-residents a credit against tax otherwise payable on income sourced in the non-resident state if the income is taxed in the, in the individual's state of residence. In still other situations, rare, there are no credits and income is in fact double taxed. Let's talk briefly about pass-through entities. 
as discussed above, in the case of multi-state business operations, states tax individuals on income allocated and apportioned to those states. Where business operations are carried on by a pass-through entity, such as a partnership, limited liability company, or S-corporation, the amount of income sourced in a particular state is determined at the entity level. The entity level determination is passed through to the individual owners. Once the income is passed through to the individual owners, these owners are taxed by the states in the same manner as in the previous slide, as if the income was earned directly by those individuals. Note, however, that in some cases, the entity itself is taxable. For example, in California, S-corporations pay a small corporate-level tax. When there is an entity-level tax, the amount of income taxable in a particular state is ordinarily determined based on allocation and apportionment. Entities are ordinarily not taxed on 100% of their worldwide income. Instead, they are ordinarily taxed in a state, even the state of incorporation, based only on allocated and apportioned income. C corporations are taxed in a manner different from individuals. Corporations are ordinarily taxed only on income allocated and apportioned to a state, even if the state is the corporation's state of organization. Corporations are not deemed to be residents of any particular state, so the practice employed on individuals of taxing 100% of income in the resident state does not apply. The system of state credits used in taxation of individuals to prevent the taxation of the same income in multiple states generally does not apply to corporations. The reason is, in theory, a corporation's income is allocated and apportioned among the various states so that each state can claim the right to tax only a part of the corporation's income and no two states tax the same income. Let's look at a brief example that compares multi-state taxation of individuals and corporations. Webco is an online company that earns $1,000. This income is apportioned 30% uh, or $300 to State A and 70% or $700 to State B. State A has an income tax rate on both corporations and individuals of 10%, and State B has no income tax. If Webco is a proprietorship, and if its owner resides in State A, then State A will tax all of the income at a rate of 10% for a tax of $100 in State A. If, on the other hand, Webco is a C corporation, then State A will tax only the income apportioned to that state or uh, three uh, or $300 of income for a tax of 
$30. In either case, State B will not impose a tax. It is worth noting that if Webco is a C corporation, it can apportion income to State B and avoid State A tax on that income, even though State B does not impose an income tax. As long as State B has the right to tax the income, if it so chooses, State A will not tax the income apportioned to State B. Let's now look at some multi-state income tax issues specific to electronic commerce. When business is done online, it is possible to engage in commerce in a state remotely. For example, a company based in France can easily access U.S. markets through a web server based in France or even a web server based in the United States. This means that states must deal with questions of seller nexus, that is, the right to tax a seller, just as they do for sales and use tax. The question of seller nexus for state income tax purposes will be the subject of the next uh, two lectures in this unit. In some cases, the location of selling activity will determine the amount of income that a state may tax. Where this is the case, the question arises as to the proper location of selling activity when the actual sale is processed on a web server and does not require the live participation of individuals. We will look at this issue in Unit 8. One of the most difficult questions for online companies that provide services is the location of the services. For example, if a company has its offices in State A, but services are delivered from a web server in State B, where should the services income be apportioned for state income tax purposes? We will look at this question in Unit 8.